finding TB is central to ending TB. Finding TB is central to reducing the transmission of TB because when you find TB, you enter people into the diagnostic pathway, you get them into the therapeutic pathway or in the TB prevention pathway. So if you can exclude TB reliably, you can offer TB preventive therapy. But if you identify TB, you then put patients into a therapeutic pathway towards cure or treatment completion. The goal of this obviously is to save lives of the individual affected by TB, but more important, importantly, the public health goal is to reduce onward transmission of TB from somebody with the infection to those around them. Close household contacts, close members in the community and close members with which they interact with uh, because person-to-person -person transmission through, through the air is how TB is transmitted. The last decade has seen enormous strides in improved diagnosis of TB. In the past, we've had to wait three to seven days in which to get a smear result um, because smear microscopy has been with us for as long as the microscope has been with us. So we first identified TB. We know that Robert Koch identified it in 1882 and uh, more than 140 years ago, right? So it's a long time. We, we were using the microscope to find TB, but in, since 2010, the mo world has moved towards a molecular-based test. In fact, almost every country in the world has adopted molecular-based diagnostics for TB. But it's really about scaling it up and making it accessible to every single person that desires a TB test. Patients may present with symptoms, and if ignored, the TB will spread within the lung itself. Go forming cavitatory disease, that means they form holes in the lung that communicate with the outside through the airways, enhancing the risk of transmission. The longer the time a person is, uh, is um, spend, uh, spends not being diagnosed, then the delay there is in uh, getting appropriate treatment, the greater the chance of transmission, the greater the chance of ex extensive disease in the lung, and the greater the possibility of that uh, TB organism spreading by the bloodstream to other parts of the body, what we call disseminated TB, and presenting with TB abdomen, TB brain, TB meningitis, and so on. And it's a more severe form of treatment with a very high mortality risk and requires far longer, more sophisticated diagnostics, far longer treatment. So, so there's the risk to the individual, there's the risk to the public. Early diagnosis is important to help mitigate all of those challenges. So welcome, Kaji. friends, to this episode of NTB Dialogues, 90 for 90 series, the Global Voices series. And uh, we have amongst us a very uh, two very special guests, actually. One, of course, is, uh, is an old friend, a very widely globally respected TB scientist, and a person who has really done amazing work uh, in a country which has a very high burden of tuberculosis, but also a TB and HIV, and so many risk factors, despite so many challenges, Dr. Koji Naidu, uh, you know, she is a very well-known person, probably uh, all of us will already be aware that she is the deputy director and the head of the treatment research program at Center of the AIDS Program of Research in South Africa, Caprisa. Caprisa. So, uh, so welcome, uh, Koji, real honor to have you amongst us. Thank you, Bobby. And it's really a pleasure to, to be with you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Koji. Uh, we have amongst us Ashok Ram Sarup. That is, uh, he uh, has been a, a luminary, a huge uh, personal inspiration for so many journalists and media people, not only in South Africa or African continent, but also Asia. One of the testimonies is he was awarded the um, a special prize by a US-based organization for his contribution to advance using media, using SABC Lotus FM Newsbreak to advance peace between India, Pakistan, and other countries in South Asia many years back. So welcome Ashok Bhai. Ashok Ram Sarup is a senior journalist. Ashok Bhai, thank you. We are very grateful. We knew that you underwent a, uh, an important health procedure last week, but despite uh, that, you are here. This speaks volumes about your commitment. Welcome, Ashok. TB has been a major public health challenge since the late 1800s. South Africa is one of the 30 high TB burden countries 
that account for 87% of the global burden. Meanwhile, half of our TB patients are also living with HIV. This means that any strategy that does not address both the TB and HIV epidemics will not succeed. This year, the theme in the fight to end tuberculosis is, yes, you and I can end TB. This message serves as a clarion call for individuals, families and communities to play a role in the fight against TB. Recent progress in TB vaccine development offers a glimmer of hope in our journey towards TB eradication. TB is curable if patients stay the course till the end, eat healthy food and live a healthy lifestyle, then we can indeed end TB. We are now joined by Professor Kogi Naidu. He's a deputy director and the head of the treatment research program, center of the AIDS program research in South Africa, Capriza. Professor Naidu is also a clinical member of National Drug Resistance, Resistant TB Clinical Advisory Committee, National Department of Health, South Africa, and Honorary Associate Professor, College of Health Sciences, University of KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa. Professor Naidu is also on the WHO's TB HIV Technical Working Group and a board member of the prestigious South African HIV Clinician Society. She was honored with the converted 2013 Union Scientific Prize for her contribution to advancing TV science worldwide. A great honor to have you amongst us, Professor Naidu. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you so much, oh. uh, Ashok Bhai. Really means a lot and uh, all, our, all our energy and best of wishes uh, for, you know, you are already on healing and recovery way. We really hope to have, listen more of your, uh, you know, radio voice, as we say, uh, which went on the airways for so, so many decades. So, uh, Koji, uh, uh, welcome again. You know, it's really important for us to have you. I know you must be very busy. So, Koji, can we have uh, um, your insights on the entry gate to TB care pathway, which is diagnostics. I think we are missing a lot of TB cases. Uh, in I come from India. I'm in India right now in Delhi. Uh, we we are missing cases in the, even among those who take a TB test because of a, a microscopy, for example, which underperforms in diagnosing. Despite the WHO call to replace microscopy with molecular testing, upfront molecular testing. The rule uh, in India, it is about 21% as per the India TB report 2024, which um, uh, um, we read about in the news about a month ago. So uh, 20, 21% in 2023 molecular testing is really very, very low. And uh, of course, we are struggling to reach the unreached. Uh, in South Africa also, there are about 70, 80,000 people who are unreached. Molecular testing, I think, is 74% as per, as per the Global TB Report 2023. So please, your insights on why it is important to find all TB we are to end TB uh, in South Africa and African continent or globally. Over to you. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for your question, Bobby. Finding TB is central to ending TB. Finding TB is central to reducing the transmission of TB because when you find TB, you enter people into the diagnostic pathway, you get them into the therapeutic pathway or in the TB prevention pathway. So if you can exclude TB reliably, you can offer TB preventive therapy. But if you identify TB, you then put patients into a therapeutic pathway towards cure or treatment completion. The goal of this obviously is to save lives of the individual affected by TB, but more important, importantly, the public health goal is to reduce onward transmission of TB from somebody with the infection to those around them. Close household contacts, close members in the community and close members with which they interact with uh, because person-to-person -person transmission through, through the air is how TB is transmitted. The last decade has seen enormous strides in improved diagnosis of TB. 
In the past, we've had to wait three to seven days in which to get a smear result. Um, because smear microscopy has been with us for as long as the microscope has been with us. So we first identified TB. We know that Robert Koch identified it in 1882 and uh, more than 100 and, 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 and 40 years ago, right? So it's a long time. We, we were using the microscope to find TB. But in, since 2010, the mo world has moved towards a molecular-based test. In fact, almost every country in the world has adopted molecular-based diagnostics for TB. But it's really about scaling it up and making it accessible to every single person that desires a TB test. So uh, we've had uh, improvements on TB diagnosis using a molecular test by up to 30 to 40 percent. So the same sputum from somebody that is subject to smear microscopy that now gets subject to a molecular test increases the likelihood of us finding this TB and initiating a person on TB treatment. This is especially important for individuals that when they cough up, do not cough, cough up enough organisms that we are able to identify with microscopy. But with the um, uh, nucleic uh, acid amplification testing, the detection rate, even in what we call OCE bacillary TB, fewer bugs, is that much higher. The technology has been improving in that the detection rate is better. And not only are we just identifying TB, we are identifying resistance, TB drug resistance with a single test. And that is so important because we know that TB drug resistance requires an alternate approach for drug choices, uh, a, a, an alternate approach for duration of therapy, an alternate approach for monitoring treatment response. People with drug-resistant TB face an even higher proportion for mortality, for death. So having molecular tests is, is important. Having molecular tests that are sitting in a lab far away from people also is not helpful. You need to actually have a test at the bedside to be truly transformative. And we are not there yet, Bobby. It's, we're still far from that. The tests that we have have capability of being point of care. However, given that the expense of rolling it out into decentralized primary health care clinics, decentralized laboratories, you know, we, we, it's still an aspirational goal to take whatever technology we have to the bedside. So we have a replacement of smear microscopy. We have replacement even of culture uh, where we now can use this expert XDR that will help identify TB drug resistance. There are newer technologies that are emerging that's going to help us identify treatment response monitoring. You know, is people getting better? Are the sputums clearing? Uh, do we need to go back to the old systems of culture? And so we are moving in that direction. So certainly, the diagnostics are improved. Currently, the issue is not just a diagnostic issue. The issue is people and health facilities not identifying TB. TB, we know, classically presents with cough, fever, night sweats, weight loss, four symptoms that the community is well aware of. The problem is when you have respiratory infections like we see in colder seasons, People get a common cold. The COVID-19 has co confused people because cough is a very dominant feature. And so they think, ah, perhaps it's the flu, perhaps it's influenza, it's something else. And so they delay seeking care and they try all the alternate remedies. And I know in India, people would rather seek uh, health care that's, uh, that's alternative rather than going to allopathic services to seek a diagnosis and seek a treatment linked to the diagnosis. So the issue then is people self-identifying that perhaps I need to go and have a diagnostic test. It's those family members of a diagnosed TB patient that don't yet know that if there's a family member diagnosed with TB, the whole family needs to be screened. If there's a colleague at work that's been diagnosed with TB, everyone working with that colleague in close proximity should go and get a sputum test for TB. And then there are those that do not have the classic symptoms of cough, fever, night sweats, and weight loss, where they may present only with weight loss, only with loss of appetite. They don't have the classic respiratory symptoms. And we've seen that in our own country, where 67% of our patients in a recent national prevalence survey did not have features of TB. But when their sputum 
was subjected to culture and diagnostic testing, TB was identified. So the TB that's occurring in what we call asymptomatic individuals are also contributing to this failure to diagnose. We think that the, the gap between diagnosis, uh, a bit between the burden of TB in the community and those that seek a molecular test or seek a test for diagnosis is about 30 to 40% in some settings. So that means there's a lot of TB in the community that is not yet diagnosed. And so it is important for us to close that diagnostic gap. I'll stop there and take further clarifying questions from you, Bobby. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Koji. This is uh, was really so important and really an eye-opener also. Imagine 67%, if I heard correctly, were asymptomatic in South Africa. In India also, Koji, as you probably already must be knowing, uh, as per the Indian government's National TB Prevalence Survey 2021, 42.6 uh, or 7% were asymptomatic. But out of bacteriologically confirmed cases, uh, more than two-thirds were uh, asymptomatic, which is like fairly large. In Nepal, I think 70% were asymptomatic as per Nepal government's uh, TB prevalence survey. So that so this will will come. We should come back to uh, this uh, this discussion about um, asymptomatic uh, uh, before because I have some more clarifying questions. Also because you know uh, Professor Guy Marx, who is the president of the union, and he has been a very long time advocate of uh, um, you know uh, trying to uh, share the example of richer nations like Australia, Japan, 50 years ago, 1970s, when they screened everyone with whatever tools they had and uh, uh, subjected everyone for the TB test so that they can find all the cases and try to bring them to TB care. And they did this year after year after year till the TB rates 50, 60 years ago went to el below elim elimination levels. And uh, even cu currently, there are countries where uh, TB is already at uh, below the elimination levels. And Australia is uh, another example. So perhaps so in Vietnam, uh, Professor Guy Marx did a study in a small part called Kamau. Uh, uh, I should not say Professor Guy Marx did a study. He was involved, but of course, Vietnamese researchers were the real heroes and heroines who did that very important study. They sc screened everyone. Uh, with the uh, molecular testing. They did not have the ultra portable X-rays uh, 10 years ago. So they 10 years ago, 2014, 15, they screened everyone uh, uh, with molecular test and uh, uh, year after year. And in four years, there was a decline of 74% in TB rates. Even in children, uh, the, the TB rates for, uh, fell by 50%, half. This is this is a lot. So I will, uh, I will come back to this because I need your insights on on if should we be screening everyone? But before we go go towards that, I like like to talk to you about diagnostic delays. It is really important for people to get tested a molecular test. But um, di diagnostic delays are huge. In uh, the in some interviews we are doing with homeless people and migrant workers in in India, um, um who got uh, who, who have completed treatment now. Uh, so uh, the diagnostic delay was more than a year. Uh, in one of the cases was more about three months uh, in another case. And Dr. Susmita Chatterjee's study, which has come out very recently, I think in, it is in PLOS uh, Public Health also. It got published last week, I think. Uh, the diagnostic delay was about, uh, I think, 12 weeks. This is a lot of diagnostic delay if we are to stop the spread of infection. So, so can you please share some insights why it is important to really find early? We have to find early if we, are, if we have to end TB as you have already you know, emphasized so much on why it is important to find all. But let us also hear your insights on why it is so critically important to find early and eliminate diagnostic delays. Over to you. So TB is progressive if untreated. Patients may present with symptoms and if ignored, the TB will spread within the lung itself. Go forming cavitatory disease, that means they form holes in the lung that communicate with the outside through the airways, enhancing the risk of transmission. The longer the time a person sp is, uh, is um, spend, uh, spends not being diagnosed, then the delay there is in uh, getting appropriate treatment, the greater the chance of transmission, the greater the chance of ex extensive disease in the lung, and the greater the possibility of that uh, TB organism spreading by the bloodstream to other parts of the body, what we call disseminated TB. 
and presenting with TB abdomen, TB brain, TB meningitis, and so on. And it's a more severe form of treatment with a very high mortality risk and requires far longer, more sophisticated diagnostics, far longer treatment. So, so there's the risk to the individual, there's the risk to the public. Early diagnosis is important to help mitigate all of those challenges. The delays comes from people not recognizing that they have TB or they present to the health facility, they don't get offered a test. Sometimes they are offered a test, but the healthcare worker does not educate the patient sufficiently on how to produce a proper sputum sample and not give saliva. We can't diagnose TB with saliva. We can diagnose TB with a proper sputum sample that's coming from within the lung or the lower respiratory tract. Teaching patients how to give a proper sample is important for us to enhance our ability to catch the TB. Thereafter, the healthcare worker or the patient themselves will not seal the sputum jar adequately so there's leakage of sputum. The leakage of sputum means that there's insufficient volume of sputum to run a diagnostic test when that sample gets to the laboratory. And that then contributes to delays from, from the time the patient enters the health service, offers a sputum test, and then goes in and gets a molecular diagnosis. Then they, you know, with COVID-19, we had such sophisticated mechanisms of linking people to a result. You know, we used SMS. There was, um, a, you know, there was this this huge uh, groundswell of education telling people you must know your status so you prevent transmission to other people. We do not have such a thing with TB. So a test result may be available, but if a patient, for whatever reason, financial, social, health reasons, cannot get to a health facility, they are not they are not accessing their result. They are not accessing linkage treatment. There are basically delays in, in getting them onto appropriate treatment as a result of that. So the we have issues with poor quality sputum. We have issues with delayed turnaround time of results for whatever reasons, either it's a poor sample or poor access to services. And then um, the healthcare worker not work, uh, acting timelessly. And you know, the nature of it is that patients will shop. They'll go to the health facility They'll go to the pharmacy to get a quick fix. They may try an alternate health healer to say, you know, uh, some uh, faith healer or a traditional health practitioner to get something to help them feel better. So they delay coming back for appointments to, uh, to be linked to their result to start on treatment, thinking that they may get help in other forms of treatment. You know, it's it, a part of our uh, education of, of the public is that TB is caused by an identifiable organism. There is a set way in which we treat it. People need to start and end therapy in order to eradicate it from the body. So all of this is part of the, it's similar to the education we got from COVID-19, masks, stay at home, you know, try non-pharmaceutical interventions, prevent lim limit onward transmission. And, and so on. So there was good health education around that, but we're not being the same for tuberculosis. Yeah, thanks a lot. Very important again, you know, I think we need to uh, not forget the lessons which we have learned from COVID-19 pandemic. And mm -hmm. to see- So some... it's excellent. It's excellent to hear, Bobby, but perhaps that needs to be linked with the strategy of directing the testing to those that will most likely benefit to improve your yield of positivity, the positive yield you know, the targeted testing. So it's wonderful to have access, widespread access to molecular testing. But how do we ensure that we get the best results from it? And part of this is having a very good insight as to who is being diagnosed with TB. Are these children, vulnerable children under five, uh, a household member of an index TB patient? Is it a family member? Is it people living with HIV? Is it diabetic patients or those on some sort of immunosuppressive therapy? Is it your homeless population, you know, or your malnourished po population? How do you direct the test and perhaps not wait for symptoms like, like we've discussed and touched on briefly, that we offer targeted universal testing 
irrespective of symptoms, because that's how we're going to break the back of this epidemic is to try and catch as many people as we can, even before they show symptoms, so that we can curb the transmission, onward transmission. Bobby? Yes, Chukbai, please. Go ahead. Well, I'd like to you know, um, is the government doing enough to combat TB? So if that question is directed to me, Ashok, I don't think governments throughout the world are doing sufficient to combat TB. I think that, you know, health budgets are cut up so in so many different fragments that we do not have sufficient resources for TB. And we no, don't have sufficient dedicated effort in, in preventing TB and in diagnosing TB. Because once you know a person doesn't have TB, that's an, a, a remarkable opportunity to put them onto TB preventive therapy to keep them protected because yes. prevention should be our number one goal totally while we're waiting for a vaccine, you know, that we put people onto preventive sure. therapy and to have policies where we do more for targeted universal testing. In a country like South Africa, sure. where non-pregnancy related infections is the number one cause of death in pregnant women, where we know that that is actually tuberculosis. We took a long time before we made universal testing, TB testing available to pregnant women. You know, the antenatal guidelines in, in many low and middle income countries was we screen for a host of infections when a pregnant woman comes for services. But we didn't include TB in those package, in that package of screening interventions. And, and that was low hanging fruit because not only do you protect the mother, you also protect a newborn infant. So, so there are strategies that we can deploy and investments that we can make. You know, governments throughout the world have not done enough to aid and accelerate um, uh, uh, investments in, for example, TB vaccines. And uh, sure. we need TB vaccines. We need an enabling environment to trial out TB vaccines to get us closer to an effective vaccine. So it may not necessarily be in the form of money, but to create an enabling yes. environment in which to get some of this work done. Yes, I totally agree with. Uh, okay, moving on. Here. I mean, is there enough public information for people to understand the importance of the disease? I'm not sure what exists in India, but I sure TB is our number one cause of death here in South Africa. But if yes, you travel, in South Africa. yeah, and if you travel. Anywhere in the cities, the major cities in our country, our beautiful country, or you travel from our airport towards the cities, there is no billboards. There is no uh, public education on an ongoing basis around tuberculosis. We hear a lot about TB in the run-up to World TB Day that we, we honor and identify with in March each year, but then we silent for the other 11 months of the year. We do not do enough to enhance public education, even within health facilities, within HIV clinics, where we know our people living with HIV are extremely vulnerable to TB. There is, in the short answer, Ashok, is that there is insufficient education uh, around what are the evidence, the signs and symptoms of TB, and what an individual can do to access a test, access treatment, just to empower people with education so that they can they can actually um, uh, you know uh, identify with the problem and know what to do if they if they think that they suspect that they have tuberculosis. Thank you, thank you for that yeah. important information. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Oh, over my, to you, Bobby. Yeah, thanks. Tell us more about you know you use last you're talking about screening everyone. So in India, we are deploying ultra portable X rays. Uh, so in states like Uttar Pradesh, for example, where which is really difficult in terms of health uh, from health indices, uh, yeah, we deploy these to screen everyone and, uh, and in the villages and molecular test to net went to the block level because it can be taken uh, deployed at that kind of a level because of being battery operated lab independent. So um, so um, the yield was uh, historic. It was hundred thousand more new cases they found last year just in one state, 100,000 new cases, imagine. Um, uh, and that too from, uh, as you rightly said, 
where are we looking? So among homeless, among migrant people, among uh, uh, populations which were earlier getting missed. So what are what are your insights on on how can we find uh, you know uh, screen everyone uh, in settings like South Africa, for example, or other African? Yeah. So uh, Bobby, South Africa is also evaluating um, the chest radiograph uh, for TB screening. It can be used in as mass screening tool out in the community. Um, and the WHO has approved it as a potential screening tool. But I think what we need to understand is that TB is a great mimicker. So TB in the lung on X-ray looks very much like other conditions that you get. The most important thing of a chest radiograph screening is if it is clear. It is a rule out test. That if somebody with a clear X-ray, you can comfortably say to them, we can't see evidence of TB. We don't need to do anything further for you. But if we see a spot on the X-ray, then we say, you need to have a test, a TB laboratory-based test so that we can investigate further. So I think it's a very useful tool for mass screening. Symptom screening is also a very useful tool. Surveillance, TB surve national surveillance, regular rotating national surveillance helps us identify hotspots, which communities, which geographic locations are facing a disproportionately higher burden of TB compared to others. And let's then target those areas to do mass screening so we get better yield. Other countries adopt a strategy, pre-employment screening for TB, or before some important anniversary event that you would go for a TB screen, annual screening for TB. In large populations such as in India, that may not be viable. So we have to come up with innovative strategies in which we can deliver mass screening. The simplest thing is education. Everyone knows when they need to go for a TB test. Secondly is high-risk groups, diabetics, people living with HIV. These individuals should have annual or on-demand TB testing available to them. And I think the key for on-demand testing, especially with cheap, uh, readily accessible molecular tests, is something we need to start driving, that people should self-select and say, I think I'm at risk for TB, I'm a smoker, or um, you know, I live in a shelter, I'm going to get a free TB test with a friendly healthcare worker who will help me to get a proper sputum sample and advance. The march forward for more um, uh, readily accessible and ready-to-read diagnostic tests like an oral swab is actually greatly going to help us to do mass community testing. If we can just swab a tongue swab or an oral swab, and that's going to flag positive, uh, you know, as a screening test for TB will be an enormous game changer. That means anybody can have a TB test and then based on that, uh, present to a healthcare facility. So I think that in tandem with strategies for mass screening, advances in diagnostics will actually get us closer to the goal of universal testing for TB. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Uh, and all the best for the South Africa National TB Conference. The whole world watches that conference. We're really looking forward yes. to that. It's in Durban, right? Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. it's yeah, um, great. in Durban. Uh, it's, it's actually in a few weeks' time. So we're really looking forward to it. We too. We have been watching virtually. <laughs> but uh, great, uh, Koji. Thanks a lot for joining us. And let us hope mm -hmm. what you have just said, you know, new tools, de deploying what we know already works even better focusing on populations uh, uh, which are more at risk. Let us hope we do all what we can. And of course, while we are advancing R&D for even better tools. Uh, so thanks a lot for joining us. Really means a lot, Ashok, that you joined us from Durban. So uh, all the best uh, in terms of health and everything uh, to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you, all Bobby. The best Thank, Thank you for you. the lovely Thank work. you, Paji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.